Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night, depending on when you're listening or watching this uh, brand new episode of the Ski Rex Media Podcast. I, of course, am Tim from Ski Rex Media, and today my guest is John Emery, CEO of Alpine X, the company that's going to bring indoor skiing to a few different places all across uh, the United States and Canada. Even though they're just getting started, and we're going to talk about that here in a few minutes. We'll get into the interview with John. But first, let me do my shameless plugs. Hashtag shameless plug. Yes, thank you for checking out this Ski Rex Media podcast, but check out everything Ski Rex Media has to offer. SkiRexMedia.com. Go ahead and over there. That's the, the main place you'll find everything from the from the podcast to my written stuff to photographs to whatever it is that has to do with ski rex media ski rex media.com is where you'll find it you'll also find links to patreon and ski rex media merch shop which is also found at ski rex media merch shop.com but the patreon the merch shop if you want to show some love and support for ski rex media that's the ways to do it my bank account will thank you also i do love when i see my shirts out and about like this or hats on people's heads like this let me straighten it out for you watching the old uh, video version here um follow ski rex media on instagram facebook and twitter the big three and linkedin as well you can find ski rex media so follow me in all those places subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform whether it be one of the audio only platforms to which there are many and youtube and rumble right right shameless plugs now gotten through that was my second take on those mind you ha <laughs> yes now that we're through the shameless plugs and the introductions let's get into the interview as i said john emery alpine x ceo um, we talk all about indoor skiing, um, what it is and what it could mean for the industry. Um, he's now working on Alpine X is now working on their first resort, um, which will open up in Fairfax, Virginia in the coming years. These are big buildings. This is not something you can just throw together like Legos, maybe one day in the future. But now we actually talk about the process, what they've done to get rid of, get ready for this, not get rid of, but get ready where they're building it in Virginia, what the future may hold what it's like to ski even at big snow. We even talk about big snow a little bit on and off, and that's going to be a competitor. Isn't that something? But we use it to reference the differences between the Alpine X facilities and the Triple Five facility. Right, right, the American Dream facility. So let's get into that with Mr. John Emery, very nice guy. Um, it was awesome for him, and it was awesome for me, and I hope you love it, and uh, we'll see you at the other side. Ski Rex Media podcast and Ski Rex Media fans in general know that I support the idea of indoor skiing. Um, I love it. I've tried it here in the U.S. Um, I've done it. I enjoy it. I love it. Big, big fan of it. And here is a man who knows more about it than I do, um, which is good. This is why he's here. This is John Emery, uh, CEO of Alpine X, correct? Yeah, that's correct, Tim. I appreciate your interest and I'm happy to be here to talk about it. Awesome. 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 I'm very interested in it. I see indoor skiing as a wonderful thing. Uh, people hate on it and we'll get into that a bit, a bit. but, uh, oh, before we get too far, let's get into who you are, what you do. And I guess just an overview of what Alpine X is looking to do. Sure. So the, uh, so I'm the CEO of Alpine X, my background, um, is really across the family resort and hospitality spectrum. Sure. The, um, so I bring a um, recreational level skier um, background to it, surrounded by um, high level, competitive level skiers in our advisory group. Sure. The, um, and we're blending that with kind of the background of the family resort concept of making things easier to get to more affordable for people to use and available year round so you're not dealing with seasonality and weather and I, i'm from the mid-atlantic i'm from virginia so sure. i am used i am used to the uh challenges of weather and getting in a nice uh, regional ski season, so I'm used <laughs> to that. But so, so background-wise, the uh, probably the most visible thing I've done that people might be familiar with is I developed a brand called Great Wolf Lodge. Okay. Uh, the company was called Great Wolf Resorts. 
and the uh, it was a concept that I invested in and wound up um, running similar to, to Alpine X. The, uh, the concept was originally developed up in, in Wisconsin with the thought that winters were so cold up there. And what we learned was that having something predictable and closer to home was really good for everybody, kind of regardless of, of your, your natural weather. And so the, the concept of year-round family resorts took off. And Great Wolf Lodge isn't the only one. There's a lot of them out there now. Sure. And so we're, what, what we're doing with Alpine X is kind of blending those concepts. Um, primarily, we're developing a competitive level indoor ski facility. So completely set up to do year-round training for the highest level of competition. Now, obviously, outdoors um, training is key uh, for those groups. But out of season, which in North America is the bulk of the year, sure. it can really cut down on travel time and get people a lot more time uh, doing technical training the, uh, in our type of facility. So ours are substantially um, more targeted at uh, supporting competitive level skiing than, than what sure. some people may think of or be used to seeing in other places. But they're also set up in particular with my background, to be from startup. So literally, we'll be training thousands and thousands of brand new skiers and boarders awesome. every month of every year and helping them transition to great experiences outdoors. That's awesome. And uh, I, love, I love the idea of the competitive side because myself and other people have talked about this. You know, now, well, one of the parts of that is that now with indoor skiing becoming popular well it's been popular other else in other places yeah. in the world um for us it's it's a new thing but we're, we're talking about how you could we're gonna see you know the next group the next generation of rising stars coming out of places you don't think about like we see them now they come out of colorado they come out of northern california they come out of you know wyoming and these places now they're gonna come out of new york city now they're gonna come out of you know fairfax virginia now they're gonna come yeah. out of you know pick your town I think that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but from the looks of it, not only from a competitive sense, as you said, a whole just covers everybody. Uh, competitive level skiers, regular street level skiers like me, their families, and just make it this entire this entire thing. Like it isn't just snow sports inside one of your facilities, is it? Oh no. So so our whole concept. Um, is that we really want a resort that's good for the entire community. And I mean the entire community, regardless of economic status. And this to me, I get, I get bumps just talking about it. I had no idea when we really started the concept of moving this forward, how eager the ski community was to really become more inclusive. And it's just been fantastic. The level of support um, that we've seen when we talk about being able to put snow sports close to home and affordable has been fantastic. But what we're coupling it with is a lot of other stuff to do. Because we all know we like hanging out with groups. We like hanging out with our families. Sure. Not everybody wants to have the exact same experience the whole time, particularly when those experiences involve certain levels of skill. Sure. So by having dozens of activities that are no skill, tubing, sledding, just snow play in the snow dome, activities outside of the snow dome, family entertainment centers, indoor adventure parks, zip lining, mountain coasters, things that are just fun that you don't even need to get cold for, yeah, you can have a group shared experience, but everybody doesn't have to do the same thing. And we've all been there when we go skiing. I mean, I'm a great example. When I go with my friends in Colorado, yeah. they ski from opening to close. I can't do that. I'm from the East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ski enough to be able to go <laughs> open to close in Colorado without wearing myself out. And sure. so we have a chance to create an environment where groups can come out, they'll do certain things together. And when 
people want to peel off and do their own thing, they're not just sitting around waiting for the rest of the group. They get to have their own experience in the way that they want to. And then all of our food and beverage is attached to and looking into the ski dome. So nice. somebody wants to come and watch somebody do some rails and jumps, you know, in our terrain park, you're still part of the experience. You're watching your friend do something fantastic, or you're watching your friend do something not so fantastic, but you're still sure. part of the experience. That's awesome. And I love that too. Like it is, it, it's just, it's, it's awesome. And I'm trying to think of a way to not bring up the other company uh, so much, but well, just so it's said, I, I, I visited big snow, American drink. Um, the first one in North America and, um, it's awesome. I've done it. It's awesome. Um, the facility that Alpine X is putting together is going to be even more so, um, from the sounds of it. Um, but I do think there is a market for it. I do think it's awesome. And I said back when they opened the other places, like if this becomes popular, someone's going to come along and start putting these things all over the U S. Um, is that accurate? Yeah. Well, first off, I love big snow. So yeah, I man. think it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Know, hey, <laughs> the, 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 you know, sports like, so all the businesses I've been in, I actually started off as a CPA, but hotels, uh, family resorts, I would say we're all tend to be friendly competitors. Sure. The, um, the, the, what I'm happiest about with big snow is that people mm -hmm. really like it. Mm -hmm. And we went up there. We like it too. Um, it's a fantastic experience. We're building something that's more of a comprehensive resort because they yeah. have other amenities around them. Right. So they have yeah. restaurants in the mall. We did all that. We played mini golf when we were up there. I mean, we had a good time. The, um, the 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 so the what's good for them is good for the industry and yeah. we're at a point now where the ski industry is so underserved in terms of being able to give people these kind of experiences close to home um that there's plenty of room for uh what we're doing plenty of room for big snow i'm sure we'll see other companies pop up the just the way it goes when when something goes well you know people want to jump on Awesome. Um, and I, I agree. I loved that place. Uh, we didn't do as much while we were there. Like we didn't walk around the mall, but it just reopened. Like we went in October. So it yeah. just, you know, for the COVID rules, it just reopened. So we, we, we checked it out and loved it. Um, we, we, I still get people who tell me it's the dumbest thing in the world. Um, I say, well, what'd you, <laughs> what'd you think of it when you tried it? Like, I didn't try it. That's stupid. And I'm like, come on, man. Like these haters out here, are you all even worrying about that or just, or are you taking any or are people even more excited? Because there's the other hand, people love these places as well. So we have a, a bigger focus on um, competitive level, being a competitive level facility. The, um, the, the, and that just comes from the availability. We have the room to do that. We're building on 200 acres on a repurposed landfill. The, um, so we've got this space to build um, a facility that goes just not, um, doesn't just do a great job recreationally, but is up through competitive. And we've involved early in the design process, um, the um, competitive coaches. So college level, uh, professional level coaches that can help us make sure the facility is ready for the type of training that they want to do. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so college level, like where, what kind of background do you have? Like as these advisors who are letting you go, or, you know, you say college coaches and stuff local to the, to that area in Virginia nationwide. No. <laughs> nationwide. <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, I'll be, I'll tell you the truth. We have a lot of, uh, I'm, sh I'm surprised pleasantly at the number of, um, competitive level, skiers who have lived or are near the, the dc metro area so where our fairfax site is yeah um, but the the we have um a number of let's say you know former olympic athletes the um okay. the and, co and, and coaches who are helping us informally we haven't rolled out a formal advisory board yet okay we would make sure the um because a lot of what we're doing is is really getting a lot of advice and i want to get it without people worried about um 
you know, I want them to give me com- their thoughts completely. Good, bad, you know, this is what you can do, this is what you shouldn't do. Sure. The, so all those conversations are being held kind of confidentially at the moment. The um, Just to make sure that I, I don't want people telling me what they think I want to hear. Yeah. I want to get their real opinion. Yeah, and that's exactly. Gone, that, that's gone really, really well. And the excitement around the ability to train year round, um, but also the excitement about being able to pull in all kinds of people who just didn't have access to snow sports before. I mean, we're all just picturing in our heads, you know, these great youth teams with kids who just never would have made it to a ski mountain, just whether from a time standpoint, an economic standpoint, and we'll do that. We just rolled out, we're, we're committing to thousands of visits a year that would be absolutely free to not just kids, but, but families who are underrepresented in our sport right now. And sure. because we're open every day, we can do that. I'm not seasonal. So I have plenty of time when I'm not going to be full. I'd yeah. love to be full every day, but I'm not. Sure. Let's use that to expand the sport and be and and really do something great for the community. That's that and that's such a great way to go about it. Um, um, and you know, I find the um the location interesting, the Fairfax location interesting for a couple reasons. Uh the first being, you know, putting these places, these different facilities near the bigger areas, that's going to I mean, that's going to make skiing far more popular than it than it is. And it is a popular sport, but it's not nearly as popular as other other activities and sports we have, um, especially here in the U.S., like football, basketball, hockey, all these. These are huge and skiing, I don't feel is, but you're not wrong. These places are right next to where people can get them. And the majority of people, the majority yeah. of people live in the cities. That's where they live. The other interesting thing I like about the Fairfax um, location is it's going to repurpose the landfill. Now, we've made jokes, me and some other folks, um, particularly Mario and Brian from the Highfalutin Ski Bums podcast. We made jokes about skiing landfills because we live in places where they are big. I I, I brought up the there's a landfill. If you're driving north through Connecticut on I-91, just north of Hartford, there's a landfill. It's capped now, I think, but it's practically a mountain on its own. I was like, dude, that's wasted land. But... <laughs> Because you could, you could ski it, but you are actually doing it in, in a way that must be environmentally, uh, uh, must have some environmental advantages and it it, it just gives you a place to go. I mean, tell the story of picking that spot. How did that come to be? Why that spot and all the advantages of it? (laughs) So the, the, the idea obviously came out of Europe because there's a lot of these built on landfills in Europe. Sure. The, and, and Europe, to be honest, has been decades ahead of the U.S. in terms of being environmentally friendly, sure, <laughs> and energy conscious. All those, all those things that that we all care about. Yeah, we're finally getting around to to, to focusing on the. Um, so Fairfax County, um, the the built a landfill with the eye to being able to repurpose it at some point. So the design of the landfill by in its nature, it's very safe. The uh, prior to rolling out our public awareness of what we're doing, we've done all kinds of in- engineering and environmental testing. Sure. So we had to make sure the landfill would be safe from a health standpoint, and that includes, you know, monitoring gas, managing emissions, making sure that we're not going to damage it in our construction tactics. All that work has gone very, very well. Nice. Because Fairfax in Virginia built, and sound funny, they built a fantastic landfill. Nice. Right? They built it. They they <laughs> built it properly. It was designed. I think it opened in the um, early seventies. So so people were already looking forward at that point. Um, so that helps quite a bit. And, and as you mentioned, what that does is it allows people to come out for two or three hours of skiing, but only spending 15 minutes in their car. The, um, the, the, you know, there's a lot of great ski areas in the DC areas where I grew up. I grew up a few miles from the site, which is, is fun to build something near where you grew up. The, yeah, um, that's awesome. But, 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 you know, it's a, it's a day commitment to go skiing 
and if it's a weekend's day commitment to go skiing and, and struggle with lift lines and things like that, if the conditions yeah. are good, here's a chance where, you know, after work, after school, you're not killing a whole day or a whole weekend if you want to squeeze in two or three hours every now and then. Sure. And, um, you know, as I said, um, people live in cities here in the U.S. You know, the majority of our population does live in the city. And one of the big problems these people have, you know, city folks have with, you know, not to not to single out city people, but, you know, having lived in New Jersey after growing up in Vermont, and living <laughs> in New Jersey, you know, I was at minimum of, you know, an hour and a half or more because of traffic. If anybody, you know, a lot of my people have been to new you know, fans of scary media sure. have been in new jersey and we all know that the i-95 corridor even going down into virginia is a mess i mean it is Absolutely. it's it's traffic from maine to at least richmond and then you get a break for 20 minutes um but you know it's good it's so much easier a lot of people said to me tim i don't really want to go with this weekend because i don't want to ride in the car for three hours minimum to get to hunter mountain to get to the poconos to get back here to vermont five hours in some places i think it's beautiful and i think it's like i said it's going to make it more popular it's going to take care of some of the inclusive or inclusivity you know you choose your word of um, issues you know when people can get there and do it and do it cheaply like um are you able to talk about what you're looking at for pass prices ticket prices any of that stuff yet do you not know is it going to be the average we don't have we don't have firm numbers yet because yeah. it's, it's a while that we open, but our models that we did mm. again, prior to rolling this out, you need to make sure, sure the numbers are going to work. And sure. the models are all based on being uh, significantly less than outdoor skiing. And I'm talking Absolutely. about even regional outdoor skiing. Awesome. Right? So, so, I mean, if you think about it, just something simple, just take a piece of rental equipment, take a pair of rental skis. Sure. I'll probably use them dozens more times a year than an mm -hmm. outdoor company will because I'm yeah. open every day. And if people are coming out in two or three hour increments, I may reuse the same pair of skis a couple of times a day. So sure. the cost of that, I can drop dramatically. So yeah. our whole idea is I want people to be able to roll up and shorts, a t-shirt and flip flops they get fully outfitted mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> they can go ski for a couple of hours and then go hang out the uh and relax the and, and big by the way big snow did a great job of that too the um, they, they did the um the the, the, the equipment uh, we went up there and, and the i think i rented some of us rented and some of us brought the um but the experience was great you know you you roll in there and they they've got you covered yeah, absolutely. And I, I love that. I mean, be, because I, I, I do it. I, I'm at a place where I own my own gear, not a lot of gear. Like I'm not a, I'm not a collector. I'm not one of these guys that has a whole quiver of like 50 pairs of skis. I can't do that. I'm a minimalist, but, um, they do. And that makes it easier, which I think will in turn make it more, um, p more people want to do it. Cause it's like, wait, I don't have to own my own stuff. I can rent everything and not just a pair of skis like people are like yeah i could rent the skis but i still gotta go buy jackets and things like this completely outfitted like in a big snow like we were confused because we didn't realize that when we went and we saw people in big snow jackets all over the place we're like damn this place has the biggest staff i've ever seen <laughs> we were surprised especially at covid time yeah. like this is huge and then we talked to somebody and we're like oh all right our yeah. fault <laughs> um but it, again, that it, it's it's perfect. It's going to get people. I shouldn't use the word perfect, but it's going to get people in the door. Now, like you like you said, before you roll any of this stuff out, you have to get make sure your numbers are going to be right. So this has been on the drawing board for a while, then, hasn't it? Yeah this this particular project started probably about four years ago. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, talking well, well, the 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 I can tell you from building Great Wolf Lodges, <clears throat> you know, our average time from identifying a site to opening, sure, is at least five years. Okay. The um, the, the because you want to do I mean these buildings are going to be there for a long long time, so you oh, want to yeah. do it right. The uh, I mean, having said that, just to make people comfortable, our mm -hmm. sites two, three, four are already in the works. Right, I'm not okay. waiting until I open the first one. <laughs> we, we can't yeah. be opening one every five years and build a company out. They, sure, uh, yeah. Our, our our plan is to be able to open, get to where we're opening one a year. 
right? Oh, and that'll okay, get you cool. a better rollout across the country. But that, that's a, a separate, a separate topic. But you know, I've sure. seen a bunch of these in Europe too, as well. When we were working on this concept, the and what people will see that have have done those again. What's going to be a little different is it's a much more varied experience in the dome. Okay. So the um, like our design. It's not just a rectangle box up and down a hill. Yeah, the, uh, it has curves in it, so you can you can have a more varied experience. One of the things I learned in Europe was the um, the the you want to be able to mix it up and have whatever level somebody is, let them vary their way down our indoor mountain. Yeah, like like you would in an outdoor mountain. So multiple runs. The uh, the other thing I like about the uh, you know, our, one of our initial pushes to be a competitive level training facility isn't really just for that group. That group doesn't drive the business model. Okay. But what drives the business model is people like me who I want to go someplace where I can aspire to improve my skills. Right. Sure. So if I'm, if I'm in a facility where I know that I can keep advancing, that the facility is enough for me to keep learning, and then when I do go to Colorado and hang out with my friends, I'll sure. get much more out of that experience because I'll have been able to be working through things before I head out that way. And we yes. all know, I mean, even, even look, even a weekend at snowshoes, which I love, that's one of my regionals that we go to. Sure. It's a great mountain, but you know, when you show up and you haven't skied much, your legs get tired early. So if you can do a little more year round, and especially in a facility that can get you on some more challenging stuff, yeah, you're going to get a lot more out of that experience. You're not going to spend a half day get, regaining what you lost from the last season. That's awesome. And I like the idea of a more varied terrain profile, um, even at Big Snow. You know, you got your park and you got the one trail to the right of it. And, you know, you do that a few times. It, I mean, it, it is blue level, but it's, you know, you'll get used to it pretty quick, I think. Um, and if you can go beyond that and keep progressing, that's awesome and get everybody ready. Um, one of the things I have heard haters say is like, dude, it's just like going to the gym. I was like, well, how is that a negative thing? Like, as you said, work it out, keep moving and you'll have a better, you know, a better experience outside. Um, so if you're continuing planning, you have the next sites picked out. I don't know if you can say anything and you're steamrolling right along, but do we know where those are going to be? Can you say that? If you can't, that's cool. Cause I get it. <laughs> Yeah, we are we are close to being able to talk publicly about this. So we have we have um, we call it LOI letter of intent. So we have a, yeah. a a a a handshake agreement. I mean, it's written, but you know, the uh, and we are working on those sites as we speak. All right, cool. I, I was just curious because I have my own ideas of where I'd like to see these come up. And it is a topic of conversation, um, believe it or not. We, when we talk about these facilities, like it, wouldn't it be cool for one to be here? Wouldn't it be cool for one to be there? Um, pre, pre, uh, Pre-pandemic, Triple uh, Five was talking about building another American Dream facility in uh, Miami. And we're going to put one there. Like that was awesome. Like, hey. You know, and people were like, wow, imagine that a bunch of people from Miami and Miami go, you go for the sun are going to be able to play on the snow. And how great is that? Um, Las Vegas, is that in the future? Because that's the one I've been pushing hard. I want that. <laughs> Vegas. So, so I've spent a long time in the hotel and resort business and Vegas has its, its own fundamentals. <laughs> the, it uh, does. It goes back and forth from wanting to be a family resort place to a don't tell us what you what you did there place. It does. <laughs> it really does. It, it varies from uh, you know now and then. The um, so Vegas is certainly a type of market that a facility like ours would be fantastic in. So I mean, if you think about it simply, if you think about it simply, <laughs> sure. you can think of NFL markets, right? That mm -hmm. tends to be where you have the population centers. Yeah, and then you can add into that some traditionally very heavy snow sports markets. So, sure. like you get up in the, the upper Northeast, the um, yeah, you, you'll you'll have some non NFL markets, if you will, that make sense just because of the density of people who are interested in snow sports. Our primary rollout right now, and, and we're North America, so we're looking at Canada as well, not just U.S. 
Sure. The, um, the, the, but it is in areas where there's a big population and I'm not particularly worried about how many of them ski at the moment yeah. because we're doing a full resort experience. We'll put, pull in skiers and boarders, but we're also pulling a lot of other people as well. Absolutely. And I like how you liken it to the NFL centers because that was the joke I made. Now, I love Las Vegas for real. I lived there for a year and a half, love the city and not just for the Sin City part. That's a great outdoor sports community there as well with climbing and mountain biking and hiking. And, you know, you do have Lee Canyon up the road, um, <clears throat> excuse me, which is part of the Icon Pass. Um, but I did make the joke. I was like, dude, we need one. We need it built and you can build it build it across the street from the new Raider stadium, which I know there's not a place for it there, but I said, you know, taking the joke to the serious, I'm like, man, I think that would be, that would be fantastic because as you said, you're not really worried about the skiers that are there at the moment, but it does have not only its resort feel, but it does have a huge outdoor sports population as well. Um, Canada, I think, also would be awesome for a lot of the cities up there and the, the bigger metro areas. Um, since you are doing North America, would you put one in Mexico? The we, I, I've never developed in Mexico. The, sure, um, we, we, I'm sure we would do it with a local partner. Uh, we do a lot of that even in the yeah. U.S. The um, but we absolutely be open to it. See, and I love that because when people think. Even oddly enough, the people I've talked to, and I don't know if you've heard something similar, they get kind of wide eyed and shocked by not not really where they open, but more that even though it's indoor and they know it, they still consider it to be a mountain place. Put it in a mountain town like if you saw one pop up in Vermont, which I think would be odd because we're so rural here. You know, we don't have large areas and like where I live, I live in, you know, I live 15 minutes from ski from more than one ski hill. Like it's not a big yeah. deal for me. Um, but like, you know, if you heard about, for example, if one of the, one of your facilities went up in Boston or in the greater Boston area, people would be, oh, Boston, New England skiing. Fine. Great. But places like Miami, Houston, Atlanta, um, you know, Phoenix, hot cities, hot cities, you know, Albuquerque, even though Albuquerque is cold, it's so high up um, sometimes, but they don't, people don't really think of these places as outside of the mountains, which I think is a problem in a way because skiing is thought of as a mountain sport. I think this will change that. Do you ever hear that? There are people like, really, you're going to put one there? So th this is one of the benefits of the Alpine X blended team of like my team that's come with me from Great Wolf, along with people that know skiing really well, the the we have that mindset of we have a more open mindset of where we can go. The um, sure. the Florida and Texas have massive skiing populations. Mm. <laughs> they travel. Mm -hmm. the, um, they have. Uh, fantastic populations of underrepresented skiers, families sure. who would love to do what we do. Yeah. Group events. So from a target population standpoint, Florida and Texas are high on our list. Nice. The, uh, the, 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 um, just for all the, all the right reasons. But I think bringing that mindset of a more broader community family resort mindset opens up the possibilities for what we're doing when you Absolutely. take it outside of how do we find a snow sports community to how do we find a population of people who like spending time with their friends and family which by the way is pretty mm -hmm. much everybody everybody <laughs> right? yeah. so i always say you know we, we kind of get to cheat in marketing because our target market is kind of everybody so i yeah. don't really say you know it's not like we go and say well find this income demographic to this income and nope we don't do that it's no. kind of everybody yeah yeah um, so so we will be population sensitive in turn and, and to be honest it's a it's a learning experience so what will happen we'll open in fairfax we'll open the next one shortly there after that sure we will start learning what population density we need to make these work 
Sure. And the the answer is usually not to build them smaller and smaller towns. Smaller yeah. doesn't usually work. You need to build them at a size where it's a repeatable experience. And we were talking a little bit about this earlier. You don't want people to be bored after two hours and say, well, I'll do it once a year before yeah. I you know, go out to a skiing. You want it to be an experience that stands alone from a fun standpoint yeah, and a, a skill standpoint. So you, you've got to get them to a certain magnitude to make that happen. Um, what is unknown, so Fairfax is an easy one. Sure. The, the, it's, it, it is, and, and like I said, I've built lots and lots of resorts, lots of hotels. It's the best yeah. site I've ever seen. The, uh, yeah. It's so close to the population awesome. center. We're repurposing a landfill. We're not cutting down trees. You know, yeah. it's got everything right about it. The um, Fairfax, I believe, will work extraordinarily well. But we'll learn how far are people coming from. How many yeah. people, right? What percentage of the population? And that and that tells us a city like, you know, take a smaller NFL city, a Green Bay. You okay. Know, does Green Bay support something like it's just an example? I haven't even looked at at that one. But sure, sure. Know, the, the, we will learn over time, you know, do we need a major, major metropolitan area or can we go into a lot of different metropolitan areas? Sure. Our our guess is we're 20 plus markets in the US and Canada. That's our guess. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Um, you know, and I almost wonder if when it gets pop even more popular. And again, it all depends on, you know, the numbers end of it. You might even be able to go bigger than that. Like, I think you have something that's going to be ridiculous with popularity. And again, because you are building it around everybody like it's not going to be super expensive. It's going to be super accessible. You're going to have more going on. Um, it's going to be great. It's it really is. Here's um, an example, Tim. So when yeah. we did the first announcement of the Fairfax project, we got sure. an email for somebody requesting a season ticket. And mind you, we were going to be opening four years from that announcement. Holy it's smokes. 86 year, 86 year old woman. Oh, wow. That's how broad, that's how broad our target demographic is. <laughs> yeah. So she's obviously getting a free season ticket when we open the, uh, sure. the first one, the first one to ask. But I'm just like, how cool is that? That. You know what I mean? The uh, to be able to have a market where, I mean, we're perfect for somebody. You know, look, a, a lot of us are aging. The uh, yeah. they, they have a facility that you're not dealing with wind and snow guns blowing your face, and yeah, the um, you know, it's a it's a more predictable place, so you can actually extend your skiing. You know, if, if outdoors is 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 getting tougher for people to get to, that's how broad our mm -hmm. market's going to be. Yeah, it really is. And that's awesome that on day one, someone, especially an older woman, was like, hey, I want to be first in line. I want first chair. Like, no, and not even first chair of the day, like day one. <laughs> that's amazing. She's awesome. I love her. Um, she's great. Um, and uh, God, I would, I would love to be there on opening day. I would. I missed the opening day of Big Snow, and I was pretty bummed out about it. But that's all right. Uh, uh, you know, we're good. Um, I agree that um, I think your target. I'm pretty sure we can get. You, I'm pretty sure we can get you on the list. So. I love that. <laughs> I will be there. I know where Fairfax is. I've never actually been in town, but I've been through it. So I'm good getting there. Now, talking about a target demographic for everybody, and this is kind of a stretch of that idea. It's it's something that I happen to notice and people getting in on it and i'm going to pop the website up here from republic it's you want to yeah. talk about this this investing this almost it looks like a crowdsourcing page but i i think there's more to it than that yeah this has been fun so we did three things to really hammer home how much a community asset we want to be the first sure. is we have an alpine x club which is just free so that gets you on our email list and the club will always get, you know, discounts, special events. You know, you're part of the club. You're gonna, you're gonna know things before they're happening. Sure. The um, the second thing we did was the um, announce our our program where we're gonna really focus on the underrepresented market at our cost, and that's just something that's being great, you know, uh, great for the community in general. The third piece was we are doing a a an offering to the public 
of um, equity, and this is the same equity, exact same economic equity that I own. So sure. the, the the shares are economically, it's not some weird instrument. The um, people get to own common stock in our company, the exact same economic rights as every other share of common stock. Nice. The, uh, is a really low minimum, less than a day skiing. The um, and this is just to build is to build awareness, but let people participate in it. You yeah. know, most people when they have ideas they like, they don't really get to get in. If a company goes public one day, they can buy it at that point. But that's you know that's a different valuation. So sure. this is letting people jump in and be part of our brand. This is the brand operating company, Fairfax Peak. It's all rolled up into one company. Okay. Yeah, I think we've got 300, we're pushing 380, 390 people already. Yeah. And we just opened this uh, two or three weeks ago. So it's been fun. The, uh, it's not, there'll be institutional money that comes in to help build the individual resorts. These are $250 million sure. resorts. Sure. The, uh, so there'll be, there'll be, there'll, there'll be some Wall Street type money behind it. Yeah. This is a chance for the community to be part of it. That's it. 250 million. That's actually less than I, I thought. I mean, that is a lot of money, but I, uh, for whatever reason, I thought a facility like this would be pushing a billion dollars for some reason. Um, but you're not wrong. This, and this also speaks to the, the, uh, the popularity of it because here it is. Um, you got 388 investors, 1533% of the minimum goal. Like that is, that that that's interest beyond interest like people are like this is awesome i'm in you you've already built your community you're done <laughs> well in a way yeah, in mean, a way i mean i mean the, the 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 it's a really cool way to build a community that's actually part of it right yeah and, totally. and it's it's i mean brand loyalty is great but being yeah. able to participate in a brand to me, I just think it's really cool. The um, and so it's been fun, and, and the messages that we're getting from that are just fantastic. You know, I mean, somebody invests, you know, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, and they're part of it, and that's awesome. The um, the, the we call them snow moguls, so you kind of get to be yep. a, you know, you get the double meaning with that. And they'll always be part of, I mean, they're, they're, they're literally founders of the company. I mean, they're in before we open day one. Yes. Um, again, the, um, the, the, it's just been fun. And, and, and there's investors of all size in there, but I just get excited for anybody in it. And we get a lot of, it's a lot of people that are local um, that are excited about it. A lot of people, and the ski and board community that love the inclusiveness message. It's all across the board um, yeah. in terms of who's interested. It really is. And it, it, it is really interesting because like you said, it, it, you know, it's, it's getting the people in um, it is all across the board. It's a minimum of a hundred bucks that at some places is less than your ticket, not to mention the other costs involved. <laughs> like some places are hitting a hundred, 200 bucks a day ticket. Um, it's, it's, it's a great deal and it's 100% unique. Like I've never seen that in, in any outdoor company has done any project they've done. I've never, that, that I can remember, like, you know, um, so I think that's great. And as you also brought up is the, uh, Alpine X club and I'll pop that up here too, for those watching the video version. Here it is on the website, alpinex.com. That's alpine hyphen X dot com for those who are looking and here it is this is even simpler sign up <laughs> like there it is yeah this is great the um i mean just we don't we you know is 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 to get people together we can let them know what's going on the um and then i mean like skiing is a community in and of itself and yeah the the this is a chance when we have special events we'll have focus on you know focus on um being able to bring people together the skiing is a great sport in that a lot of times people go as groups, but even if you go as individuals, which I do a lot, if I'm trying to warm up for a trip, sure. the, uh, you wind up, you know, bonding with other people and you're chatting with people in the chair and the, uh, the club's a chance for people to kind of join that kind of community. 
Absolutely. And and you're not wrong. It, it's it's a skiing and snowboarding are wicked social sports. And, you know, we all took a little bit of beating on that end over the last year and a half, yeah. you know, with the COVID. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah could. Absolutely. If you were talking to somebody, it was from across the parking lot. And that kind of stinks. Um, now, hopefully with your timetable, this will be done. How happy are you that the timetable kind of got around that, this COVID stuff? So, I mean, look, I, I mean, COVID was tough on the hospitality business, for sure. Wicked bad. The, Wicked um, bad. the it's bouncing back strong. The, um, yeah. the, the, like, like everybody, I mean, we miss lots of part, you know, lot, lots of the, of the bonding beyond your, your, you know, my, like my small circle of friends and family you hang out with regularly, you miss those opportunities to be part of a bigger group. And it's nice that they're coming back. Yeah. The, um, the, the, we learned some things in COVID that will help in the design of this. So the design will be more sensitive to surfaces and, you know, and keeping people a little bit apart. The, the, we, we already had an emphasis. My whole idea was I want the entire process to be seamless. So everything yeah. that irritates you about going skiing, we want to try to fix, right? Oh, yeah. Easy to get to, easy to park, easy to buy your ticket. I don't want four different lines, right? A line to pick yeah. up your pass, a line to get your gear, a line to do, get in the dome. So yeah. all these things happen to also um the more seamless we can make that the more covid friendly it is too yeah right? absolutely. So the less touch points you have so those things kind of go hand in hand so our designers are are working a lot of that in sure the um simple things and i think um most of the indoor places do this now but you're not buying specific time slots so mm -hmm. arrival and departure for us will be just completely rolling Okay, um, and that cuts down on traffic and parking. So everybody's not showing up for a ten o'clock spot, then a noon spot, then a two o'clock spot, because that yeah. creates lines. So sure. ours is completely rolling. The, you'll have a time frame, but you show up. You can take your time putting your equipment on. You're not burning through time that you paid for. Your time's going to be when you're in the dome being active, yeah. right? But it takes the stress off of getting ready. And we've all done it, especially outdoor. You bring yeah. a couple of people with you who are newer. It's taking them an extra 20 minutes to get their gear on. Everybody's getting antsy, right? Right. And Absolutely. Two people go off, you know, see them for a half day because, right? Absolutely. <laughs> That's totally it. Phones and the, uh, I just want it all to be more relaxing. So everything sure. from you want the entire process to be relaxing and especially for new skiers learning is intimidating enough yeah we don't need to add stress to it the our learning area will be very separate from the downhill area sure and the learning area is big enough to where you can practice so before you jump in the middle and have people flying by you and yeah and being afraid of running people over yourself you can really kind of get your skis or your board under you and feel some confidence. So um, the, 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 you try to do everything you can do to make the process relaxing and fun while people are developing their skills. I love that. And it is going to make it easier um, to, you know, even they get big snow, I believe they're still doing uh, session times um, still. That's that's what they opened with. I think that's still what they're doing, which for me and the couple of guys I went with that that was easy for us. You know, we we planned, you know, and we've been doing this since we were kids. So we know, you know, we know the drill. Yeah, uh, there's, but, there, there's were great when we went there. I liked mm -hmm. it. Um, it worked just fine. The mm -hmm. um, we're going to be since we're substantially larger. Sure. I need to spread it out more. Yeah. Right? So so for me, I need a little more of a rolling you know, show up, take off yeah. to, to keep, to keep it from being people being bunched up. But for what they were doing, I mean, we were there on a Sunday. So one of their probably busier days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it would be, like I said, great experience. It was fun. We had, we had a really good time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
I love the place. Um, and I'm I'm definitely gonna love your places. I mean, they already sound great. Like I'm like everybody else. I see all this stuff, and it's just like, man, I'm ready. And you know, it, let, let's get it open. Which obviously is silly <laughs> because I, you know, just kidding around. I know that these take. It's gonna be it's gonna be quite the engineering feat. That's interesting too. Like I'm I'm just like a little kid when I see the big trucks and the big cranes, I stop and stare just like everybody else. That's gonna be cool. The finished product is gonna be awesome. I can feel it already. And now you're already pushing to make it an efficient process, which I think is one of the things that also kills skiing. You know, we talk about accessibility and cost, but efficiency. Like if you can cut the lines out of it or cut them down to whatever you need to, not just let you know. This left this lift line is out in the parking lot. Then the ticket line is out in the parking lot and they're bunched up and even down to food service. Like if you can get rid of that and make it efficient, people are going to be all over that. I love it. I love that idea of it. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me again. Um, I think the efficiency part is something that if you get it down at your facilities, you're going to force the outdoor facilities to look at that too. And I think that's a big deal. One of the things we see that a lot now, a lot of the hate that's going towards some of the outdoor companies, which we don't have to talk about openly here, but you know, people are hating big on some of the big companies right now. And efficiency is part of that. Um, now I don't, I guess the question with that would be, do, do you agree? Do you think your facilities are going to take skiing to another, not another level, but force some of the big names, that have already been operating and operate outdoor facilities, you're going to force them into new things uh, in a way. I would tell you that the, the example we're going to set in terms of guest experience sure. will put pressure on ski resorts to take a little different approach, particularly maybe some of the regionals. Um, mm -hmm. the, 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 we have the benefit of having tremendous hospitality experience in our group so yeah. things like so for example um we have two different architects designers for what we're developing the ski sure. dome that experience all comes out of europe yep. they know what they're doing they've done them for a long time and they're amazing at it yeah. the hotel because we have a 300 room hotel the restaurants all the space where people are moving, I actually have a resort designer that I'm working for that who's built dozens and dozens of resorts because you want it to move like a like a Disney hotel where sure. there's a lot of people, but the lobbies are huge. The common areas are really accommodating. The, um, yeah. And that comes out of the hospitality business. That doesn't come out of the ski business necessarily. Not that I mean, obviously, a lot of resorts do a great job at it. The uh, the the but 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 we're bringing we're kind of mixing those two businesses together from an operating standpoint, but also from a design standpoint to get the people flow down because people flow is what frustrates people. Yes, right. If you put and and, and trust me, a lot of this comes from mistakes. So like yeah. I said, I've, I've built a lot of stuff. And I remember one time we put the first place I put the Starbucks in. Mm -hmm. We were thinking we put a Starbucks in. It was right off the lobby. The line yeah. was so long because everybody loves Starbucks. The line sure. crowded my entire lobby. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you just learn lessons about where to put stuff and how to line people up. And sure. It's just unintended, unintended consequences. So, so what we do there is we hire people. Um, not just on our team, but our our experts who have made a lot of mistakes, seen a lot of mistakes. Yeah, hey. so, you know they can do the best job of opening this up. Right? We don't. Fairfax isn't version one. We think of Fairfax as version four. Right? Nice. We're not starting from. Well, let's build something and be careful. Fairfax is being built with every idea we have. Nice. It's not a subset. And then if it goes well, we'll build a bigger one someplace else. Sure. The, the Fairfax is being built with every good idea we can think of already in place. That's awesome. Like you are the you're killing it. I love when a company can come out and say, look, we're dotting every I we can. We're dotting every crossing every T we can. We are on it and you're trying to do it in the most efficient way. I love it. You I, I feel like it's already open. Like it, it almost feels like to talk about it 
like we're talking about, or the, at least the way you have everything being planned out, the, the you know steamrolling ahead to the next facilities already. I almost feel like, dang, can I get in the car now and go down to Fairfax and go do this? <laughs> I think that's great, but to that well, the point, hill, the hill, the hills there. There's no snow on it yet, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll try it on. I'll find a pair of grass skis and try that on. You know, whatever's there. Have you all broke ground yet, though? To that point, like of doing it, I yeah, I don't remember. We're we're, we're about um, roughly six months from finalizing the zoning on that site. Okay. And by the way, since we talked about investment, for anybody sure. interested. Just please read the entire site because it's it's an SEC deal. I mean, we're we're I run two public companies, so we do everything really, really open. Sure. So there's a lot of information on that site if they're interested in investing. The um, just make sure they read it so they you know know where everything is and all that. That's my always my caveat. I always like to throw out there. Sure. The um, the, uh, the the so we're we're. Fairfax is a little different than most of what we'll do because it's a public-private partnership. So Fairfax okay. will continue to own the landfill. Okay. The, um, and, and that that positions them to continue to maintain it to make sure that it stays healthy for everybody. Sure. Virginia DEQ, um, which is our environmental group in Virginia, they'll monitor it over time, but that one is a public-private partnership over time. Okay. A lot of the sites will go buy a piece of land and build on. So that'll be a little okay. bit different. All right, uh, but the Fairfax one takes longer. Like I said, it's been in the mix. I think roughly four years. That one will take longer than a typical one will take. For gotcha. Those reasons. Got it. That's interesting. But it, it's is, scheduled. It's scheduled to open end of 2024, early 2025. All right, cool. So we're so we're, we, we're a little we're three a little over three years out. Okay, which isn't which really isn't bad um, for the size, especially of the facility. But yeah, you're doing everything right, and that takes time. Um, and I think it builds. I think it's going to build even more excitement, like as people start to see it, because like you said, the first day out, now somebody's looking for a ticket. The first day, you know, um, that it's announcement, and that was a while ago. Now people are going to be like, "Gosh, I wouldn't be surprised that leading up to it in weeks, you have almost like a Black Friday retail people sitting on the sidewalk in tents waiting to get to be." concert ticket style people sleeping on the sidewalk to get tickets i mean i don't know if that's really we'll, we'll find a way to do it when they don't need to sleep on the sidewalk but <laughs> the, uh i think like, i think I'm, I'm sure interest will be will be high as we get to opening and I like so. i said the cool thing is there's no seasonality nope so once we get open we're there every day yeah and, um you know i mean look monday and tuesday nights are not going to be as busy as saturday and sunday and people sure. can come when it suits them yeah it'll work out real well it's going to be it's going to be great i think it's going to be great i can't wait till it opens i do remember the original announcement obviously i don't remember the specifics um but i do remember seeing it and i was like man this is this is going to be a thing here this is this is great and i've been wanting you know i've never gone to europe but i always said if i were ever going to go I'm going to go check out an indoor place because I had never done it. And I, now that I have done it here in the U.S., I think I think it's great. I think it's awesome. I think everybody else should think it's awesome. I'm not telling people what to think, but I think it's awesome because it is. <laughs> um, check it out. Ab that. Absolutely. I say check it out. Um, go, you know, go to Big Snow now. Get a feel for it. And then that way, you folks who live a little further south in the mid-Atlantic, you can you can be ready. You can be late in the ticket line the day it opens or buy your ticket in advance. This is the 21st century. You're, you really don't need a ticket window anymore. So anyway, but that's awesome, John. I think what you got going is amazing. I think it's going to be great. I can't wait, man. I really can't. And I th I'm sure you and your, your, your whole staff are excited as well. Well, Tim, I, I mean, I appreciate the interest. Um, I know it's a while until we can all, uh, you know, start skiing in them, but I appreciate the early interest. And again, just the entire community getting behind, the entire skiing community getting behind the entire community has just been so cool to be a part of. Seeing the support for opening our doors up to everybody that we can imagine, that's, that's been a really fun part of this. It It, it really is amazing and like uh, i i like i said and i keep saying it, it's great it's awesome if you want more information um 
anybody out there. You can go to alpine-x.com. That's the website, and that's where you can get everything. You can can sign up for the Alpine Club. You can get to the link to the Republic site to get into on the investments and everything else, all the information. If we missed something, I don't know if John and I missed anything here. We might have. Do you think we missed anything? No, Tim. I think think we've covered it, but (laughs) hey, if people have questions, Sure. Uh, super reachable. The uh, John at alpine-x.com. The, uh, I love input from the ski community, honestly. So I've gotten some great ideas and met some great people. And anybody interested, just find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, email. We we're yeah. happy to talk. Absolutely. And that's actually how I got a hold of John was through Twitter, I believe, initially. Yeah. So there you go. The man is here. He's ready to answer your questions. He's ready to open facilities so you can come visit them. And it's going to be great. Keep it. Keep an eye out coming to a city near you, hopefully. Um, they're not coming to a city near me because Boston's the closest city, but whatever. Um, well, it, you know, if it comes to Boston, great. I'll head to Boston, whatever. I like Boston, but it's awesome. Everybody, you're going to dig it. Um, it's going to be great. And like John says, these are going to be awesome, all inclusive resort style with competitive level training. It's going to be great. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate you coming on the program. Excuse me again. Um, I do appreciate you coming on the program, answering all our questions, talking about the indoor thing, because I love it, and I know I'm going to love your facility. (laughs) Thanks, Tim. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And we are out of here. We'll talk to you on the next one, everybody, later. And there you have it, everybody. Fun, interesting interview with Mr. John Emery. Thank you to John once again um, for coming on the program and talk about indoor skiing, which as I said during the interview is something I very much support and I think is going to drive the industry in many, many positive ways. Um, If you want more information, we shouted out the websites and stuff, but for those who missed it, um, if you're watching the video version, look down below me. It's scrolling across the screen, alpine-x.com and that'll take you to everything you'd ever want to know about Alpine X, um, about their investment program on uh, the Republic website. You can check that out. There's a link for that there. All the other links will be in the description of both the audio and video versions. Again, as I always say, audio only versions. If you're listening in the car, check out the links once you stop and it is safe. Don't pick up that cell phone. Plus the ticket isn't cheap if you get caught. Right? Right. Thank you, John Emery, for being on the program. That was very interesting. And I can't wait until the Alpine X uh, facility in Fairfax opens up. I'm definitely going to be there. Um, He may know we can get me on the list. I hope I get on the list and we'll check that out. Thank you once again for listening or watching the Ski Rex Media podcast. podcast, Hashtag watching. Oh, my tongue tripping, my tongue tiedness. Thank you anyway for participating, for listening, for enjoying the Ski Rex Media Podcast. I really hope you did, and I really hope you continue to do so. In coming weeks, we have other interviews, um, one being Adam Sourwine, which I recorded just after I recorded John Emery's podcast. He's from the Out of Bounds Collective, the Out of Bounds Collective, Out of Bounds Podcast. A few weeks ago, we heard from Adam Jabber, host of the Out of Bounds Podcast, Adam Sourwine, host of the Pursuit Podcast on that network. So we'll be talking to him um, and a few others. So be stay tuned to that. Um, remember to subscribe or follow everywhere and you will be the first to know when new episodes come out or at least follow me on social media, the big three and LinkedIn and um, or, well, no, not or, including also, <laughs> oh man, I'm not doing a second cut of this. You know what? Everybody can have a Biff. I do Biff Reels um on the patreon so check out patreon if you want to see some behind the scenes and some biff reels and some extra content over there as well um several tiers for you to join check that out i would appreciate it as with my bank account but what i was trying to say was follow ski rex media on the big three social media twitter facebook and instagram as well as linkedin and just when you listen to the podcast go ahead and hit the like button if there's a like button on youtube there's a like button on rumble it's something else if you watch the video versions and it could be anything on the audio versions from a star to a like to a whatever rate it give me a five star rating on apple uh podcast other people have share comments cuz i need to know this stuff i need to know what i'm doing bad what you dislike what i'm doing good and what you do like let me know all of it um questions queries comments concerns give them all to me um, if you want to hook me up with an idea of someone you'd like to see as a guest on the old Ski Rex Media Podcast, let me know that too. Follow, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, comment, rate, do all that for me. I really would appreciate it. And like I said, pardon my being tongue-tied and just tripping over my own words and stuttering. It happens, right? 
right? Winter's fast approaching, kids. There's places open already in Colorado for skiing. Um, New England isn't open yet, but they will be. I think it's going to be a good winter. So I'll see you out there on the slopes, my friends. Later.